I will be discussing the, this topic in detail in this session, so don't miss out. I will be discussing how do I create the threads and then after that, guys, Java provides a built-in support for multi-threading. So, so this function will help me to activate threads in my program. That's what you need to do. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting chapter. That's nothing but multi-threaded program. Guys, what exactly multi-threaded is all about? Yes, Java is famous for this topic. Yes, I will be discussing the, this topic in detail in this session, so don't miss out. So let's check what is that I have in my bag today. Guys, I will be discussing what exactly multi-threaded is all about. So fine, so basic concepts of multi-threading, then forward, followed by, I will be discussing how do I create the threads, and then after that, how do I extend the thread class? The next topic and the last topic is, so for the day is stopping and blocking the threads. This is what I will be discussing with all of you in this session. I want everybody to watch the complete session. So let's check what is that I have. Guys, Java provides a built-in support for multi-threading. So this is one of the inbuilt feature of Java programming language. That's what you need to remember. The second point says, please observe multi-threaded program contains two or more parts that can run concurrently. What exactly it means? Imagine I have this program. So this program has got more than one part which can run concurrently, parallelly. The part, the one program can start its execution with the different different parts parallelly. So that is with the help of the concept of multiple threads. That's what you need to remember. Sir, fine, we understood multiple threads. We have multiple threads. What is that? Multiple threads now. So please listen to me. Each part of such program is called as a thread. That's what you need to remember at this point of time. So each thread defines a separate path of execution. So it is independent in executing the such separate separate part of the program is what you need to remember with respect to the multi-threading. So fine. Moving forward, the thread is similar to a program that has a signal flow control. That's what you need to remember. Imagine I have a big program. In that big program, I have a different different parts, sub parts. So each sub part is getting executed parallelly. So the guy who is responsible to execute that program is what I will call him as a threat, is what you need to remember at this point of time. So fine, let's take an example and understand. So please understand, I have a main thread. Okay, I have a main thread. So please observe this is a main method module that I have. So I'm going to start this, okay? So this is a thread A, okay? This is a thread B and this is a thread C. So what is that you need to understand? So imagine this is a main program. So again, this main program has got sub programs and this each sub program is executing parallelly. That's what you need to observe here. Each program is getting executed parallelly. It's, it has got its own so flow control. That's what you need to remember. It's, it's, it's executing. It's getting executed by different, different threads. So please understand. Do I have one thread? No, I have more than one thread. Can I call it as a multi-threading? Yes, you can call it as a multi-threading. Parallelly, you are executing the different parts of the program. So that is called as multi-threading. So let's understand, how do we create the threads? If I want to create the threads, I have two methods. The first method that I have is, by creating a thread class, I have to create the thread class. That is the first method. Yes, what is the second method that I have? By converting a class to a thread. This is the second method that we have. I repeat, this is very interesting in fact. The first one is, by creating the thread class, the second one is by converting a class to a thread. So this is what the methods that I have if I want to create the threads. Sir, let's understand the first method, how exactly we are trying to create the threads. You need to remember, if you want to understand this point, so you should have watched my previous sessions. So that is all about the uh, I will not tell you, so please go back to the playlist and check what is that I have done. So yes, let's try to understand this point now. Listen to me carefully. How do I create the thread class? So please listen to me. 
define a class that is the first thing that you have to do you have to define a class yes ready my class is ready then what is the next thing that i have to do so then extends thread class you have to extend the thread class and overrides its run method this is what you need to have imagine to have a class first thing you have to create a class imagine you have created it and then you have to extend the class extend the class to the thread class that's what you need to do it and then you have a method called run okay you have to method called run you have to override it only then you will be able to create the thread that's what you need to remember fine so the second one that i have so please observe by converting a class to a thread how do i do it so very important define a class yes i'm defining a class then implements runnable interface here i'm using interface here i'm using interface so please understand so here i'm using the concept of interface here i'm using the concept of inheritance that's what you need to remember here fine i'm uh, using the interface runnable interface then again the runnable interface has only one method that is run okay so this is to be defined in the method where the code can be executed in the thread that's what you need to understand so you have to use the inheritance or you have to use the come on what is that interface with the help of these methods i will be able to create the threads so fine how do we extend the thread class so i told you in the first one we can extend the thread class let's look at that how exactly we are extending it so i have told you the first one that i have is declare the class which is extending the thread class that is the first step that you need to remember i have to declare a class which extending the thread class so please understand so what is the meaning of it we did not understand yes i am there for that guys thread class is a class i will treat this class as super class which is already defined okay which is already defined i am inheriting all the properties of this class to the class which i am defining it that's what you need to remember so that is the meaning of the first statement so fine then implement the run method i have the method so i have the function okay inside this class i need to implement that's what you need to remember in the second point so fine i will do that also then you will be able to create the object or call the start function so this function will help me to activate the threads in my program that's what you need to remember this is how i create the threads let me show you the sample of it so guys this is how i declare the class so i have to use the keyword called class yes you all know that and this is the name of the class which i have given and then i have to use the keyword called extends so to inherit all right so fine so what is the super class thread is a super class so fine so this is the syntax of the class that you need to remember then followed by i have already told you you need to implement the run method so guys this is my run method and i will be implementing it so whatever you want you can create the code so that's how you will be creating the run method this is how you will be implementing the run method and then followed by so please observe this is how you create the thread how do i create the thread so what is that i have here so this is the name of the thread that i have so please observe i'm using a keyword called new and i'm initiating what is this this is the constructor so please observe my thread what is this my thread so please go back and check what is this my thread so my thread is the name of the class so if i have the name of the class is a function name you should treat that as a constructor that's what you need to remember so if i this is a syntax that i need to uh use to create a thread this is very very important all right remember this, this is how i create the thread then how do i creating a thread is not a big deal after that i have to activate i have to start it how do i do it so with the help of the start function i will be initiating or i will be making it active or i am starting it so that's what you need to remember so fine moving forward so guys how do i stop it so it's very simple thread name dot stop function i will be using to stop that thread so all this functions is very very important with respect to your exam point of view so please remember this function the syntax of this functions so please remember moving forward i had already told you so blocking a thread so i can have these three functions i can use these three functions i can utilize these three 
So the first one is I can make it inactive for a while. Okay. So with the help of the function called sleep. So the thread will go for a sleep. So blocking for a specified time. So 10 minutes you take a nap. So you don't do anything. So that I can do it with this function is what you need to remember. And the next one is suspend. Block until the further orders. Don't do it. Stop everything. So stop watching until I see you. Okay. So that I can tell you with the help of the suspend function. That's what you need to remember. And the last one that I have is wait. Block until certain condition occurs. So like this, I can use all these methods to handle my threats in my program is what you need to remember. So guys, this is the end of the topic. So in my next class, I will be discussing the next continuation of this topic. So don't miss it. Keep watching the next session of Money Threading. So thank you. Bye-bye.